everyone. It's a great pleasure to have uh, today Zaida Guelati Khalifa as a remote speaker from LKB Sorbonne. Please. Okay, thank you very much uh, um, for uh, inviting me to this uh, nice conference. I really hope to be uh, in presence with you, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, I have a lot of things to do here in Paris for this uh, table. So today I will uh, uh, present the most uh, the statue of our experiment in Paris that aim to the determination of the fine structure constants using atom interferometry. Let me first recall the context of our uh, research uh, uh, activity. Uh, as I mentioned before, our goal is to determine uh, the fine structure constant uh, accurately. That means that we need to uh, determine of the digit uh, here. And why we need this? Our uh, main goal is, uh, of course, to test the uh, standard model and more precisely to pro pro provide uh, um, uh, accurate value of uh, the fine structure constant for people calculating the anomalous of magnetic moment of the electron. And the idea is uh, to see any deviation between the theory and the experiment that could be the signature of physics beyond the standard model. Uh, the electron moment anomaly um, is, uh, excuse me, is uh, uh, known uh, as the deviation uh, of the division from the, uh, the prediction of uh, the arc prediction of the G factor of the electron. This uh, correction is in part due to the interaction of the, uh, uh, to the uh, vacuum and uh, fluctuation and vacuum polarization has been first observed uh, by Cush and Foley in uh, 1947 and is really a small collection, about one per thousand. And the first calculation has been done by Schwinger. And these uh, uh, two results was uh, the, the starting, if you want, point of the quantum electrodynamic. Uh, let me just give you the statue of the theory and the experiment of this uh, 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 anomalous magnetic moment of the electron, and also uh, the one of the Mayan. So, thus, as mentioned, the theoretical value or the value predicted by the uh, standard model uh, 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 is the contribution of QD, are the only contribution and weak interaction. And currently for the electron, the uh, dominant term is this uh, QD term that can be written as a power theory of the fine structure constant. The, this coefficient of this uh, A, P, E, uh, and for the, this term uh, are calculating, uh, calculated by using uh, uh, Feynman dia diagram. And currently they are calculated up to the fifth order, that means n equal five. And as you see, uh, and they, we need for that uh, 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 to know the fine structure constant. And as you see here, the, uh, oops, sorry, the limitation, uh, uh, I, I show you here the value, the theoretical value calculated with the, our uh, uh, value of alpha, uh, from the recoil of the rubidium and the one from group of Holger Miller who, uh, uh, that use the, um, the cesium. And we see in both cases the, uh, the uh, main contribution on the uncertainty come from the, uh, the, the uncertainty on the fine structure constant. Uh, uh, and the, even that need a lot of uh, diagram payment for uh, fifth order, we need more than 12,000 uh, uh, diagram. These coefficients are uh, um, calculated with the 
a good, uh, comparat comparatively good uh, 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 accuracy. So, what about the experiment? The experiment, uh, the measurement of, in the principle, the, the measurement is uh, uh, really simple on the paper because we to determine the G factor of the electron, we measure directly this uh, anormal frequency and the cyclotron uh, frequencies. And for that, the, the, there are only one group in the world doing such experiment is the group of Gabriel C. in uh, uh, Northwest North University. And they use uh, a single electron in pinning trap, and they use also quantum jump. Sorry, oops, happen. Oops, excuse me. Oh, what happened? Excuse me. And they use as a method a, a quantum jumps, uh, jump spectroscopy. Uh, to uh, measure uh, precisely the uh, two frequency. Uh, they recently published a new value. Uh, this is published in PRL uh, 23. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the new value is a good agreement uh, with the previous one. And they uh, reduce the uncertainty by a uh, factor about less more uh, uh, factor two. Uh, this is uh, uh, the statue boss of the theory of experiment today. And uh, all I, if um, you want, all this community uh, are working for a uh, 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 main goal is to try to explain the Mayan puzzle, if they are really Mayan puzzle, because the question is still open. So as uh, there are a big discrepancy between the G, uh, the, uh, electro, um, uh, the uh, anomaly uh, of the magnetic moment of the, um, the Mayan, uh, the recent, uh, the three recent measurement uh, made by Fermilab are in good agreement. And these, the, the recent result, which is now on archive. And if you see the theory, the, the, the theory, there are many open questions about the theory. The standard model uh, cal uh, calculation uh, published in this white paper in 22 show a big discrepancy, more than 5.1 uh, sigma uh, between the theory and the experiment by another uh, calculation based on QCD approach seems in a good agreement. And the idea uh, and the goal is try to explain this discrepancy and try to understand uh, uh, many people in the world are now working to, uh, on the theory, of course, and uh, try to, to understand uh, uh, where is the, the problem. The question is if this is really an effect of uh, or the signature of new physics, it should be observed on the electron. And by using naive scaling, the effect should be uh, smaller on the electron because the mass of uh, the Mayan is uh, two, more than 200 larger than the electron. And the effect will uh, be uh, two, 10 to the minus nine uh, uh, smaller. Uh, uh, that means that uh, uh, the, the, we need uh, uh, to improve uh, significantly the uncertainty on both experiment and uh, the theory of on the electron to uh, hope to see uh, some uh, thing. So, uh, um, how we uh, measure, uh, uh, we determine the fine structure constant. We don't measure the fine structure constant. We determine the fine structure constant by starting from this uh, formula that gives us just the uh, uh, energy of uh, kinetic energy of the electron in the first orbit. Uh, 
hydrogen and from this formula and introducing the relative mass, we can deduce alpha uh, from the Rydberg constant, the ratio H over M E. But as it's hard to measure this, uh, this ratio, we uh, induce, as mentioned just before, uh, the relative mass of the electron and the relative mass of an atom. And in this case, we use this formula uh, to uh, determine alpha. And uh, currently, as uh, you see here, the uncertainty on alpha uh, is limited by the uh, uncertainty on the ratio between of H over atomic mass. In fact, uh, and uh, this ratio, uh, as no uh, in the new SI, H is fixed has a fixed value, uh, uh, is limited by the only the atomic mass. And I just want to show you the contribution to a uh, delta a U, the difference between theory and experiment. Uh, um, uh, of all this term. And here I, I put in green the, uh, the value that corresponds to the discrepancy uh, on the Mayan. And as uh, you see here, uh, 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 we need, uh, 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 and if we, uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, try to see significant effect, uh, I, I put this, uh, um, uh, uh, brown line, which corresponds to uh, uh, three sigma, and then we see that there are, uh, uh, each community needs to to make strong effort. Uh, experiment on uh, the, the uh, uh, electron G factor, the uh, recoil measurement this is uh, our experiment but also the, the relative mass of the rubidium and the cesium. And this goal needs the convergence, I mean, of different uh, um, research area if we uh, to, to try to see uh, something. It's just uh, my, my comment. Now, how we measure alpha? Our experiment is uh, really simple on the paper. Uh, we uh, measure the recoil velocity of an atom that absorbs a photon uh, with a, a moment h bar k. k is the wave vector. And uh, this recoil is too small, is about five to six millimeter for rubidium uh, per, per second and 3.5 millimeter for cesium. And as I mentioned, there are two groups in the world working on this. Uh, our colleague in Berkeley, group of Olger Müller, and uh, group of Paris. And the principle of the experiment is uh, the same, uh, is and also simple. The idea is to transfer currently to the atom a large number of uh, uh, photon momenta, uh, tip or using uh, uh, block oscillation in accelerated optical lattices, uh, lattice, and we are able to uh, transfer more than 1,000 uh, 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 photon momenta. And then we use an atom interferometer to measure the Doppler shift induced by this change in velocity. And then the uncertainty on the recoil velocity is given by the uncertainty of, or the sensitivity of, you, if you want, of on the recoil velocity is given by the sensitivity of our interferometer divided by the number of uh, photon momenta transferred to the atoms. So, uh, 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 how uh, um, uh, uh, works our atom interferometer? Uh, uh, first, we use uh, uh, Raman transition, so we use rubidium atoms. And we use a Raman transition, transition between the upper fine uh, uh, level of the ground state uh, uh, um, uh, to uh, perform to uh, 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 perform atomic beam splitter. 
and uh, the interferometer or Ramsey Bordet interferometer consists in two pairs of P over two uh, light pulses, uh, two pairs of uh, these uh, two uh, laser pulses. The first pulse creates a coherent superposition between these uh, uh, two levels, one and two. And then the second pulse put the two, uh, and sorry, and these uh, uh, two uh, wave packets are separate spati spatially thanks to the rock called transferred to the atom, which is equal to K1 plus K2. As we are in contra-propagating configuration, this recoil is uh, about 12 millimeter per second. Then, uh, we uh, put the two separated wave packets in the same internal state. Then we uh, apply our uh, optical lattice to transfer to both wave packets a large uh, number delta P of photon momenta. And finally, we use this uh, last pair of light pulse to close our interferometer, I mean, I, we recombine the two wave packets. And finally, we measure the population in F equal 1 or F equal 2. And for example, the probability to find atom in F equal 2 equal 1 plus cos delta phi divided by 2. And delta phi is the atomic uh, uh, phase shift between these two uh, path of the interferometer. We uh, are able to calculate this um, uh, uh, phase shift by using a Feynman path integral. And we show here that this phase shift depends on H uh, uh, over M, okay? And uh, uh, the mean velocity between the, the velocity of two wave packets and the difference between the two uh, times the difference. Uh, uh, with, um, in fact, this is this term, as we uh, show you, is the separation between the two uh, uh, arms of the interferometer. Uh, more precisely, uh, this uh, 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 atomic phase equal an H M divided by L, and R is the number of rockets transmitted to the atoms, and this term to where T Ramsey, as I mentioned, is spatial separation between the two wave packet. Uh, in fact, this is uh, in simply the, the area enclosed between the two arms of the interferometer. And to uh, probe this atomic phase, or we uh, uh, we uh, scan the laser frequency uh, during this second pair of uh, light pulse. In fact, what we really measure, we measure the uh, Doppler shift, and we uh, uh, scan uh, this, uh, the frequency of the laser to find the frequency that compensates this uh, Doppler shift. If uh, we can... Uh... So how work the experiment? This is the, uh, the exper the, a, a sketch of the experiment. We, for this, the, this previous measurement, we use uh, um, uh, uh, atomic molasses to produce about 10, 8, atoms at uh, 4 microkelvin, and then atoms are launch, la, uh, uh, launched in this, uh, uh, array, in this tube where we control the magnetic field, and we use our what we call atomic elevator. It consists also in, to, uh, in uh, two coherent acceleration based on Bloch association technique. We first accelerate the atom, and then we stop them here at the uh, bottom of the tube. And during the free fall of the atom, we apply our measurement seconds that I, I showed you before, the 2p over 2 
the two pairs of P are two pairs, and the red one is the lattice uh, light to transfer to the atoms uh, one thousand uh, recoil velocity. And finally, we uh, measure the population in by uh, 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 absorption here uh, in this uh, detection area, and we measure the, the uh, using the same technique that used for uh, atomic loss by uh, uh, time fly uh, method the population in f equal one and f equal two. And uh, the probability to find the atom in uh, uh, F equal to uh, is the fraction of uh, correspond to the fraction of atom in this level. Uh, this is the uh, 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 typical uh, atomic fringes. Okay. Oops. Oops. Um, and as each point here is obtained by uh, repeating all the seconds. I mean, we produce the atomic uh, cloud, we launch the atom, and we apply the measurement seconds, and then we sweep the frequency of the laser, and we repeat this process to uh, to, um, to to obtain these um, uh, fringes. And we uh, just uh, fit these fringes by sine function, and we determine the, the center of these fringes. And currently, we are able uh, to, uh, with, uh, recently we achieve uh, uncertainty of three, uh, uh, 30 uh, millihertz on the fringes. Uh, this is the result of uh, 2020, and we, we improved this uh, in recently. And uh, this, uh, in this case, uh, for this result, uh, we have a sensitivity in terms of atomic velocity of 20 nanometer per second, which corresponds to 3, 10 to the minus 9 on H over M in one minute integration uh, time. And we are uh, limited by the vibration and not we are at uh, quantum uh, standard limit. Uh, level. So um, our setup is really stable and reliable. The experiment work alone uh, during all the week, and this, uh, this is uh, typical data from Friday to Sunday. And uh, Sunday, and then we see you see here uh, we have a good statistic. I present here uh, uh, Allen deviation. And our um, statistic is uh, we achieve, we have a, a, a typical uh, a statistic uncertainty of 8, 1, 9, 10 to the minus 11 on uh, two day integration time. Which, uh, and thanks to the uh, stability and uh, reliability of the setup, we was able to measure uh, or study uh, several systematic effects uh, uh, experimentally uh, by varying uh, different parameters like uh, TRMC, the spacing time between the two light pulse, or the number of block oscillation, or the duration of the acceleration. This is our budget uh, uh, um, uh, error. And as you see here, the main uh, 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 systematic effect come from the profile of uh, the laser beam that I will discuss uh, uh, widely uh, in, in the following. Uh, this, uh, you have a GUI phase, the wavefront distortion effect, and the wavefront uh, curvature. And the second uh, uh, systematic effect is uh, also the resi residual and phase shift that also I will explain in my uh, second, uh, uh, in, uh, in the uh, following slide. And we uh, totally, uh, we achieve uh, a total and systematic effect of 1.811, uh, 10 to the minus uh, 11 on uh, alpha. So uh, the 
the main problem, our main, main problem is this uh, question. What is the momentum of the photon? As uh, we show you this atomic phase, we, ext we measure the atomic phase. We know the number. We want, we, we want to extract this term. And we uh, need to know the k vector of the Bloch beam and the Raman beam. Unfortunately, we don't have a plan wave, but we uh, have, uh, as you, uh, you see, um, distorted wave, and we need to calculate and determine the correction to the, the wave plan. In the case of a Gaussian beam, the correction uh, is here. It depends on the waist of the laser, the size of the beam, and the curvature. Uh, this is we phase, and this term is uh, the, the curvature of the wave. And uh, of course, we need uh, a larger beam and a smaller uh, uh, atomic cloud. But uh, larger beam means more uh, higher intensity, and of course, experimentally, we are limited. And in uh, I, uh, uh, in fact, in the true life, we never have a Gaussian beam, but we have what I call arbitrary beam. And uh, we uh, can show in use in um, a paraxial approximation that the correction, this in fact is general formula of this formula. In the case of when you have your laser uh, uh, field is uh, written like that. And then you have two terms. You have a, a phase gradient and another term that depend on the Laplacian of uh, the uh, laser intensity of the laser amplitude. And as you see, this term, as uh, which evaluate here, this correction change of uh, uh, sign it depends if we are in maximum or in minimum. And uh, these, um, uh, 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 in fact, uh, that means that these effects could depend on the number uh, uh, of the atom in the, the cloud and also on the size of the atomic uh, cloud. And we uh, and there are another problem uh, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, correction depends on the laser intensity, and uh, uh, and as you see here, uh, the probability uh, to uh, of Bloch oscillation, that, uh, which means the probability to transfer a photon uh, momenta to the atom, depend also. On, uh, of the, uh, uh, on the intensity of the laser. And then there are a correlation between the, this correction, a Laplacian term, and the uh, probability. And this uh, uh, means that this effect depends on the uh, laser, uh, on the number of atoms. Uh, and we did this experiment, we measure the uh, number of atoms as function of laser intensity. And uh, we see that the correction depends on this effect. In fact, if we uh, uh, don't lose the atom, that means all the atoms get the recoil, which means that we have a probability equal one to transfer to the atom, this effect is close to zero. Why? Because this average, uh, this fluctuation average. But if during the Bloch process we lose atoms, we have some, uh, uh, the effect could be uh, really important. And we did in this paper a large uh, uh, and deep study of this effect. And to manage this, uh, sorry, to manage this effect, we did a measurement by varying the number of atoms in order to find the laser parameter to lead to this, uh, uh, this plateau. 
And also we did a Monte Carlo uh, a simulation to evaluate precisely the uh, correction due to this effect. And also we use the technique to reduce the laser, uh, local laser fluctuation by uh, propagating the laser beam for uh, long distance, three meter. And as you see, we smooth the uh, laser fluctuation. Then combining these uh, three uh, ingredients, uh, smoothing the fluctuation, uh, doing the measurement by controlling the number of atoms, that means the efficiency of block oscillation and uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulation, we was able uh, to uh, evaluate uh, the, this correction with an uncertainty to about 210 to minus 11. The second systematic effect is uh, due uh, to the expansion of the cloud. Uh, this is the wave function uh, after Raman, uh, 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 Raman pulse, and we uh, create a, a um, coherent superposition in the two states, state one and state two. The atom that performs the transition gets uh, the, the phase of the laser, but the, as the atom that not perform the transition get also a phase uh, which is right in here, and this phase depends on the detuning. Uh, uh, the detuning uh, here. If the detuning equals zero, this is perfect. This effect, uh, uh, this phase equals zero. But uh, uh, in our experiment, what happens? As the, the cloud expands, the, the intensity seen by the atoms uh, uh, vary during the, the pulse seconds, and then the light shift, two photon light shift vary also during the seconds. And this variation of the light shift seems that the displacement of the level, which uh, 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 induce uh, um, which uh, uh, means that the detuning not still uh, equal zero. And the signature of this effect is the dependence of the central fringes on the uh, velocity. And we see that by changing the initial, in fact, if everything is okay, the configuration of the interferometer is independent on the initial velocity. But because this uh, expansion of the cloud, uh, these effects depend on the initial velocity, and the, in, uh, the signature of the effect is uh, due to uh, this one. And to consult this effect, what we did, in fact, we uh, run the frequency of the laser during the seconds uh, to, compensate, to compensate this effect of the expansion. And to find the right slope here, we uh, uh, vary the slope uh, until to uh, cancel the dependence on this uh, uh, on the this velocity. And uh, Saida, I'm sorry for interrupting. We are already five minutes over time, so in order to have some time for discussion, still maybe okay, you I just finished. Could... Okay. Okay, thank you. This, sorry, uh, this is our uh, result, uh, last measurement, and uh, um, the, uh, we are in good agreement. This is, uh, uh, the, in this slide, I compare our value to uh, the one uh, deduced, for example, from the, 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 the G factor of the electron. The new value of uh, uh, Gabriel C is in good, uh, the new value of alpha from uh, Gabriel C is in good agreement with our value. But the problem that we have a big discrepancy, as you see here, with uh, the group of uh, Olger Müller. So uh, I skip this slide. Just uh, to finish there, uh, 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 as you see here, the mini systematic effect uh, depend on the temperature of the cloud. And recently, we did a, a measurement with the, the Bose-Einstein condensate. 
And uh, we uh, obtain uh, 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 very good fringes, a good statistic, but uh, we uh, discover new systematic, uh, uh, in fact, we see, uh, in fact, we did measurement by alkaline optical molasset and both, and both Einstein condensate over uh, three days. And you see the result here. In orange, the result with optical molasses, and in blue, the one with the back. And we see that we observe a temporal fluctuation uh, uh, with the back, never observed with the optical molasses. And, uh, uh, and then to understand this effect, we did measurement by uh, displacing the condensate along the laser uh, beam. By we just, at the end of evaporation process, we impart a transverse velocity to the atoms. And we see here that the, uh, the value of H over M depend on this transverse velocity. That means that following the position of the atom, the value of H over M uh, 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 vary uh, significantly. This is good news for us. We did simulation and we uh, recover the same behavior with, um, uh, with the condensate uh, and also with the optical molasses. And this is good news. Why? Because now we are able to use a condensate to precisely uh, probe the, uh, uh, the, uh, the profile, the, the effect of distortion of the wavefront. Uh, currently, we are implementing a new collimator and, uh, uh, and we test them, we evaluate this effect, and we show that we are able to reduce the uh, 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 standard deviation uh, by a uh, two order of magnitude. And uh, I skip this, the, this part, sorry. And this is uh, my summary, I'm sorry to be alone. Uh, uh, the, the, the most important thing result is this one. The, the back seems more sensitive to local intensity. In fact, we expect this, but we uh, recently we demonstrated and we are able to uh, refine our model now with the back. And, uh, uh, and currently we are uh, starting uh, uh, implementing new collimator and we expect to do this uh, study in um, more detail and to start new measurement. Uh, we plan also to measure uh, the local velocity with 85 and we are uh, implementing a new experimental setter with a three meter interaction uh, uh, tube uh, to uh, increase the number of association. Thank you for your uh, attention. I'm sorry for uh, to be too long. Thank you, Saida. <laughs> Other questions? We have five minutes time for one or two questions. Tim. Hi, thank you for a very nice talk. I, I was just noticing in your systematics table, it looks like that with some fur further improvements in your measurement, which looks like you'll, you'll be making soon, the relative mass of, of rubidium will start to be important. Uh, so I, I was curious if you know of, of people who are uh, starting to, uh, to, to make measurements better, or, or maybe your, your measurements will it encourage efforts in this direction. In fact, I discussed with, uh, uh, I don't remember uh, his name, sorry, but the guy who is uh, doing this measurement, he said, uh, 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 if I understand, we are ready to make measurement, uh, measurement of uh, relative uh, mass of uh, rubidium if needed. You, you understand my answer or not? They are uh, all yeah. in to do that I, at Heidelberg, but they, uh, uh, estimate is not uh, uh, needed for the moment because I think when the the limiting 
limitation to of alpha will be this uh, relative mass. They will. Uh, they are all. Uh, tools to do the measurement, if I understand, and to improve the uncertainty on this, on this uh, measurement. I see you. A beautiful talk. This is James uh, Thompson. Um, <laughs> um, so, so following up on the mass of, of rubidium, my understanding is the best mass of the electron is actually coming from um, like bound state G factor measurements, and then you back out using QED calculations what the mass of the electron is. Do you know if there are any other paths to getting the mass of the electron that are viable at this point, at this level of precision and accuracy? I'm sorry, James, I don't, uh, could, could you repeat, please, your yeah, question? I'm, basically, I'm asking sort of, um, how do we know the mass of the electron at this point? Uh, the, the mass of the relative mass of the electron is known with this uncertainty. Uh, do, do you know if this is coming from these, um, I think bound state G factor measurements, where then they, yes. they use your value of alpha and kind of bootstrap to then get the mass of the electron. Is that? That is uh, provided from this uh, G, uh, G factor, yeah, measurement. Sure. Do Do you know if anyone is is actually going to try and do this in a way that's um, independent of QED theory? Because that's one of the beautiful things about this approach is. It's a very experimentalist approach. Uh, like there's just very little sort of complicated theory that has to go into this approach, except for the mass of the electron. That's kind of where it's kind of snuck in again. Yeah, I'm so, uh, I am sorry, but I don't uh, I'm sorry. Uh, answer this question. I don't know people. I just know this group, uh, uh, but I don't know other group working on this, sorry. And if it helps, I, I just wrote to Ed Myers at FSU and poked him saying, you should measure the mass of rubidium. <laughs> so we'll build some momentum around that. Okay, thank you. All right, there's another further question. Christian Zanner from Colorado State. A quick question for, for a short moment, you showed the um, fringes that you got in the BC configuration, and I couldn't quite see how much the contrast improved. But I was sort of curious, what, what is limiting the contrast of the fringes you get? Is it you know, spatial imperfections? No, in fact, the imperfection of the, not to uh, limit the contrast. If you see the contrast with the, with the, uh, uh, the loss of contrast between uh, condensate, this is the contrast with the molasses, and this one is, uh, what is, oops, sorry. Not in, the contrast seems better with the compensate. Yeah, I, I guess I was curious what, what is limiting it? Like, what's the mechanism defining the contrast you get? Um, in fact, no, the contrast is not, um, I try to, to give a right explanation. Um, in fact, the, the contrast depend, uh, the sequence is not clear because the, um, the, we, we have some limitation due to the atom. We lost atom uh, and the efficiency of Raman transition is not uh, uh, perfect. And as we see here, I don't discuss this uh, point. In fact, we use uh, these uh, 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 Raman beams to clean, uh, uh, the, uh, to, to make atom in F, uh, exactly in F equal uh, uh, to, uh, uh, in our case. And uh, the efficiency is not uh, uh, perfect uh, for different uh, reasons. Uh, but not, uh, in fact, not, not technical limitation for the contrast for, uh, for the moment. But if you uh, uh, do a theoretical uh, calculation, you cannot have a contrast of 100. 
In fact, we don't li are limited uh, uh, by in the contrast. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Zaida, for joining remotely and for the talk. I think we have to move on for the sake of time. Thank you. Greetings to Paris. Bye-bye.